how do we feel about what this baby? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on my peeps? Your boy Versatile is back with another video. And as we see, we have young little miss wifey here. <laughs> <laughs> little Miss Candace. Candace. See, see What's us. going on, guys? And yes, we are here to talk about our iPhones. The iPhone 10 are 30 days later. How do we feel? Am I switching back to Android? Before we get into the video, before I let you know, make sure you ignite that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, share this video everywhere you can so people can get the lowdown on what's going down here in the world of Versal. We again continue to show our appreciation and express that to you guys. You guys have really been enjoying our content recently yes, and I'm definitely appreciative and she's thankful. So yes, thank you guys. Giveaway will be coming through soon. If not around 500 subscribers, it definitely will be at a thousand. You guys, we've been growing much faster recently, so it will be there before we know it. Then we're gonna do a giveaway. Don't know what the giveaway is gonna be yet, but nonetheless, there will be a giveaway. Giveaways get better over time, so be patient with us, please. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. And the first thing we're gonna start off with is the display for dramatic effect. How do we feel about what this baby? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> she don't care about her phone. <laughs> no, it's because I have on lotion. <laughs> oh, yeah, lotion. That's why I have this ring right here. Yeah, I put it sure this, didn't work. I didn't yeah, it sure it on. didn't work. So how do we feel about the displays? Oops, how do we feel about these displays? Of course, there's been a lot of talk about the iPhone 10 displays being of lesser quality than the 10s and the 10 Max, but has it been a big deal? In Candace's experiences, how has the display been? Um, I mean, it's really like, it really, <laughs> <laughs> it's like any other, or my previous iPhone, I had the 7 Plus, so it feels, it's a slight difference, like, just light difference when it comes to watching YouTube videos but if you just go in like let me give an example really quick so say if I play say if I play let's see what's your video look at you <laughs> it's wrong for that okay here let me go in here say if I play this the video right okay oops maybe I should do full screen yeah not a bad idea Okay, if I play this video, right? It says it's a little blurry. Then you just go up here, you know, go to quality, and then go to 1080, and then it'll switch to a clear display, and you can't clean. even tell the difference. Looks clean. So. So, as you see, just from a woman's perspective, one who's not as into the technicalities behind specs and whatnot, you see the display is solid, it's straight. From one who pays attention to specs and is in the tech from a nerd's uh, perspective, the display's been fine to me too. Like, there's been no issue. Like, 1080p on this is technically 820p because it's not a full HD display. But again, at the end of the day, it looks clean. It looks, if not better, about on par with my Google Pixel 2. And it's a 1080p display, but we know the Pixel 2 has uh, a little bit of display issues. So just being that, for it being an LCD panel, being uh, a slightly lower than 1080p display, it is clean and sharp. You're never gonna have any issues viewing from this here. So display, solid. Next thing we're gonna talk about is battery life. How has battery life been on the 10R? Again, from Candace's perspective, how's the battery been? <laughs> it's been great. It's better than I see. I've had iPhone since the 4s. Yeah, it's the 4s, right? So oh, well, I, I think it was the 4 because I don't know if it's the 4 or 4s, but I have it since then. And this honestly is the best battery life from Apple because my 7 over time. Now, I hope that doesn't happen with this. Like, over time, it gets worse, but with my 7. In the beginning, it wasn't this good at all. Like, 
I can go a whole day without charging. So it's really good. Okay. Now, again, for those who do have sevens and seven pluses and below that, maybe even the eight, eight plus and the 10, it's a good idea for you guys to go get your battery replaced anyway because of how Apple play around with the battery. And on top of that, battery loses degradation over time uh, or degrades over time, I should say. So if you go to the Apple store or actually send your, your, your phone in, for 30 bucks, you get your battery replaced and you'll see your battery health go back up to 100%. Most of you guys are going to see battery health around 85% right now. Her 7 Plus is at 85%. So that's just a side note as far as battery on the older phones. But yes, as she said with the 10R, battery's been <laughs> amazing. I don't have to charge this phone every day if I didn't want to. And I could probably push it through two days, two full days without charging. And that's because, one, I'm not on my phone often, even though I average about four to five hours of screen time. Um, I like that feature that Apple gives you to show you how just how often are you on your phone. Um, for a battery life, from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m., I only lose about 30 to 40 percent, mm. and that's through a work day. Uh, if I really wanted to push it, I could push it to you know two straight days because at home it barely loses any battery because I'm barely on it. Yeah, so true. I could probably squeeze two full days out of this phone. But I don't have to. And I wirelessly charge it every night. So I don't even charge it when I get home. I just wait till I go to bed and I throw it on a wireless charger. And the phone's at 100%, no issues. You can leave it on a wireless charger because Apple's software on the inside, how they do battery management, it cuts the battery off basically once it reaches 100%. And with wireless charge and any charge, once you've reached about 80 to 88% or so, it starts trickle charging the battery, which kind of benefits the battery in itself. So you won't have no issues with battery life. Now, on the day off, I barely lose battery life, period. Like today, uh, see, I woke up around 9, 10.30 when I finally took it off the charger. I'm at 97%. I don't know if you guys can see that, mm. but I'm at, really? Just don't play me like that. You guys can probably see, I'm at about 97%. Okay. And that's from 10.30 this morning. Um, now, it's somewhere around 2.30. Yeah. It's around 2.30 right now, so I've only lost 3%. <laughs> I've only lost 3% in, what's that, four hours or so. So, yeah. you see, 3% in four hours is like a little over a percent an hour. So, battery life, amazing on this. By the end of the day, I probably will still have around 85%, depending on if I use this phone anymore. And I've been browsing. I've been running through emails. I've been uh, scrolling, played a video or two on YouTube. You know, I've been going back and forth between tabs on Google Chrome. Battery life is amazing. Battery life is amazing. And you charge. And I literally charge once a day. I don't even use my fast charger. I'm like I bought the USB Type C to A, and she uses it more than I do. I mean, if I he have to it use it to not use it, which no. I thought I no. told him I was like, you're not even gonna use it. <laughs> okay, look, I will use it. It comes great and handy for traveling expenses. Let's say something happens on my wireless charger, or I just feel like using it because I need battery real quick. Because maybe for whatever reason, maybe I'm I didn't charge it, and I've just been allowing the battery to hang out. You know what I'm saying? And we about to go somewhere in a couple hours. Sink, sink. Plug it into that lightning cable for that fast charging. I got 50% just like that, or 100% depending on what time we leave. So wireless fast charge, or not wireless, but fast wired charging comes in handy in a pinch. Like if you really need battery True, right yeah. away. So it's always good to have that backup and I only spent $20 for the cable because I already had the charging wall adapters. So again, battery life, great on the iPhone XR. Yeah. Next subject, the feel in the hand. How does the phone feel? I mean, like 6.1 inches tall. I didn't even tall. say about my battery life. Yeah, you did. You went first. I did? <laughs> Wait, what did I say about it? Oh, I did. I did. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Okay, okay. Is, she'd have to go second if she can't remember all these. Y'all look at that short term memory gone. All right. So, how do we feel? Ooh, my screen is really like. I'm going to take my screen protector off probably at some point. What? Uh, as you guys know, I got a clear uh, skin on the back, but I probably will take it off, even though you guys can't tell it's on there. I can tell around the rim. Uh, at the top, like it gets on my nerves, so I might just take it off and just rock the phone all the way. Screen you know, protector wise. Do you wires. even use the KC dot, the frosty uh, one? Yeah, well, from time to time. See, 
Another thing, side notes, which is part, actually not side notes, part of the feel in the hand, the grip. How does the phone feel? I'm gonna go first. In this case, I love the grip, I love the feel, it feels great. Now again, as you guys heard in my previous videos about the iPhone XR on this channel, I like the iPhone 10 and 10s size. I like the 5.0 inch size just because in terms of reachability from the top. Now with the feature of reachability in software, if you go to settings or you just search in your search function, reachability, it'll pop up. You can you know tap down on the bottom and it'll pull everything from the phone down so that way you can swipe for notifications and your control center easily. So that remedies that, but I know 5.8 inches, I will gain a little more reachability at the top and I would like that. But, again, I like the size of the phone. It's great. Viewing, videos on it, feels good. Yeah. It feels good in the hand. As she... <laughs> <Give me. laughs> Flossy. Now, <laughs> now, in terms of cases, that's why I don't rock cases often. Period. Because most of the time I like the phone. I like to feel the phone. Yeah. And I got a red phone, so I like to show it off. So, with cases, to me, cases is like a fashion statement. So... If you're going somewhere every now and then, you want to just kind of, you know what? I'm going to try this today. Like, to me, a phone case is like wearing a hat. A phone case is like a pair of socks. Like, you switch them out from time to time, depending on what you're doing. So, I got that frost case. I got that leather case you saw. I'm going to buy a few other cases anyway, just because I like the cases. And I like them thin, because I still maintain a good grip, good feel of the phone. So, for me... I don't rock them because I like the feel of the phone. It's not going to get in the way. Is it slippery from time to time? Yes. yes. Most phones will be slippery if they're made out of ga uh, gas, glass or even metal. So that being said, it's still good. I mean, I'm going to probably take the skin off on the back because I just want to rock this phone clean straight. I was watching a, a video from Zolo Tech. He was talking about how he doesn't like screen protectors and in, in cases more or less probably skins as well but cases skins you still maintain the, the feel of the phone it's just whether or not if you want a different design on it on the back or, or not or in this case i got clear to rock my red now there's different skins i like out there that i might apply carbon you know um some type of carbon color the retro apple look you know there's diff different things i could do with it and that's just simply because i you know i still like to maintain this feel and it doesn't really slip out of my pockets which is great and i'm also much more aware based off of other phones slipping out of my pocket so i've taken care of this phone i went through a whole week not having screen protector or the skin no scratches perfect so that's what gives me the confidence to okay. take much of this off and just rock it as a regular phone so for me feel good great candace how do you feel about the feel of the phone okay well for me, the, um, I don't know, I just, look at you. <laughs> Leg phone asleep. <laughs> <laughs> For me, the phone, I don't know, it feels, I'm used to the, I, it, okay, I don't really know, I don't care about the feel of the phone because me, I'm focused on protecting the phone. I've And then you guys, since I've had Apple, I've only cracked my screen one time, one okay. time, and it was because... And it was while I was actually like trying to fix my case and my phone flew out of my hand on the concrete and it slipped. So I always have... Uh -oh. I'm glad we ain't got hardwood floors because you would have cracked the phone <laughs> about two times no, in I have, video. That's why I have. That's why I wear a screen protector. That's why I keep a case because I know that my hands... I'm very... Oh, I'm a very... Small little baby hand. <laughs> I'm a very clumsy person. So I know that you know, if I don't have a case on it, if I, you see how I fell on my hand twice. If I don't have a case on it, it will be cracked. So I don't care about the feel. I just wanted to see the color. That's why I got a clear case. And I have this on the back, which I cracked when I first got it. But the feel of the hands, it's not a big deal to me. It just feels like a case because I always have a case on it. Okay. Okay. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, next subject. And this one's probably get, get, uh, geared a little towards me. App selection on iOS versus Android. Most of the apps are here. Uh, I like, for the most part, how Google's integrated their apps on iOS's platform. I don't like that for Google Assistant, you gotta go through a variety of steps to try to get Google Assistant. Like with Siri Shortcut, 
you gotta say hey Siri and then say hey Google. That makes entirely no just no sense. So really? for me, I just use a widget. I think I've showed you guys before. Wait, but, oh, oh come on now, really? Now it's only gonna work. All right, so just swipe over, and in my widget center, you see the Google Assistant right there. Y'all see that? Just tap that. Then I could do it as, as opposed to trying to say so hey Siri, us. hey Google. Show so me. let's say I open the phone. Let's say let's say I start from here, right? So I click it, give my face. All right, right. So I swipe over. See, now this is what gets on my nerves. Now, boom, right there, right? Then I hit, boom. Hey, what's the weather? See how easy that is? Okay, all right, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so, see, that, that's f fairly easy. Okay, now let's see Siri. Hey, Siri. <laughs> I think you might have to turn the phone off. Oh. Right. <laughs> she didn't have iPhone all this time, did Hey, Siri. What's the weather? It's currently raining and 53 degrees in Rock Hill. Mm -hmm. Expect thunderstorms starting tonight. Okay. Temperatures are heading up from now, hey, again, the difference yeah. between Siri and Google is Google is way better than Siri. So, yeah, you can ask any uh, voice assistant what the weather is. You don't get the weather, no problem. But as far as conversation, Google Assistant reigns superior. I agree. So that's not even a thing. So, so for me, because I'm just still so heavily involved with Android or Google, still having my Pixel 2, I'm going to prefer the Google Assistant. Now again, there's certain Android apps that's not available on iOS, such as like articles apps that gear towards Android. Like there's just nowhere to be found in the world of Apple. But I can find all, all kinds of article apps for Apple stuff. So. That kind of hurts me a little bit, but the only way I can get it is using the Google News app, um, as you guys saw in our What's on our iPhone video. But otherwise, app selection is not bad. There's certain other apps that, that that's on here that are pretty cool um, that might be on Android. There's probably some type of Android version, such as like portrait mode, like uh, picture apps or picture editing apps. Mm -hmm. But again, I do most of my editing on my Pixel 2 for everything, and that's just what it is. So app selection on here, not bad. You got anything to have when it comes to app selection? No. Okay, so, boom. Now, at the end of the day, the last thing to talk about, actually, never mind, there's two more things. One being camera. The oh, camera yeah. is pretty doggone good on this. Now, every now and then, I would like to take a portrait picture of an inanimate object. In other words, not a person, mm -hmm. but it's not a big deal. It, I, it hasn't phased me in that in that in that department when it comes to taking pictures. Taking pictures is crisp and clean. Now, in darker sure. settings, if you if, if anybody follows us or follow me on on Instagram at Michael, you know what I'm saying? It's in the description box below. <laughs> You'll see I took some dull like pictures of her outside, and you still see some grain, or you see where the iPhone struggles taking low light pictures. Had I had my Pixel 2, would have been no issue. So. Hopefully, Apple continues to, to refine and improve the low light photography. But if there's a light or a ton of sun, oh, you straight. Oh. Oh, you good. What? You good. This is amazing. Both on the rear facing camera and the front facing, and the front facing camera. Anything to add to the camera. I agree. Oh, I agree. Um, there's a difference. It's a difference with. Because, you know, I, I said I had the 7 Plus before and this. At first, I didn't like. I preferred my 7 Plus camera because it was darker. So when you take a picture, like the lighting was more true, I feel like. This makes it brighter. So it's more of a, I don't know how to explain it, but it's just different. So I like the darker, more real tone. But um, then I, when I started using this more, I realized, oh, I like this better. It's a lot more clear and vibrant. And it's, it's really, uh, what's it called, zoomed. What is it? Oh, wide zoom? Yeah, yeah you got wide the wide zoom. zoom with the so, 10R. The 10R has the wide angle camera Yeah. on both the front and the back, I believe, or at yeah. least on the back. So that's the advantage the 10R has it's definitely over like previous iPhone models is that you do get the wide angle view yeah. as opposed to having dual camera modules where portrait, I believe on the 10S and 10S Max, revert to the zoomed in or the telephoto lens. So. I guess it's preference, but a lot of people do like wide angle because you can 
bring, of course, more into the picture. Right. Is what she's referring to. So, you know, if I can, I'll see if I, if I haven't, throw some pictures up with some pictures taken with the front and with the rear. And I'll probably label front and rear on that. So, you know, there's that. Last but not least, price. Has this hurt the pockets? Well, I guess I have one more subject after this. Look at you. Thing, but <laughs> price. I, I mean, we, we got these through our carriers, so it hasn't really affected us like that. Right. But I will say for seven fifty, it's not bad. Yeah. Now, we see Apple struggling, of course, selling phones to what they thought they should have been selling them for. And maybe had they started this off at 700 as opposed to 750 it would have it would have been way more attractive. Yeah. That way, there would have been a difference between the 10R, a true difference between the 10R and then the 10S and 10S Max. And then... With the last year's models, it would have been like a hundred, I think it's like a 50 to a hundred dollar difference. And then people would have felt more compelled to buy the 10R instead of buying the iPhone 8 because I do feel like you're probably missing out trying not to buy the iPhone 10R or of course the 10S, 10S Max. I just feel like what Apple's doing with gestures on this, amazing. Mm -hmm. The full near full screen, amazing. You hear I didn't say anything about the bezels because I'm sick of people talking about <laughs> the bezel. There's no bezel. Stop it. Okay, you all sound silly. <laughs> so, yes, at the end of the day, what Apple's done with the the new direction and new design language for the iPhones is amazing. Anything to add? No. <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, the true question of the day outlined in the title: Am I switching back to Android? No. Now, of course, that sounds definitive. Oh, this does. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, of course, that sounds definitive. The reason why it's not is because I'm still seeing Android products I would like to buy, such as the OnePlus 6T, the Google Pixel 3, smaller one, even though I'm used to this big screen now, the smaller one just, of course, just looks like it feels much better than the Pixel 3. Excel until they fix that whole notch thing, because I probably will get rid of the, the their notch and, and just, you know what I'm saying? So... They are still, and Huawei is doing an amazing job with their phones and their camera technology as well. So, of course, there's still Android phones I would like to use. And because I still have an Android phone in my Pixel 2, I can still gain access to certain apps or certain things I want to take advantage of that I can't with the restrictions placed in iOS. So, and I still have an Android tablet. Now, I do want an iOS tablet, preferably the new yes. iPad Pro, because I would like to start editing on that. It's a beast. Now, question, would you ever... So, do you see yourself going back to Apple? I mean, back to Android. Ooh, that's a good question. I, oh. You better answer right. If you don't <laughs> eject those <laughs> out, out of this video. That's a hard question to answer because I have the best, technically the best of both worlds right now. I got a newer, yet much, in, our, in much people's opinion, better iPhone in the 10R as opposed to the 10S and 10S Max. I also have the Google Pixel 2, which despite its issues, is a better software experience on Android. And then of course, as you hear, Google Pixel would be the phone I would stay with. So switching back, if I did, again, it'd be for the Google Pixel 3, possibly the OnePlus phones, because it's also cheaper and still just as good as a Pixel device. So is it a matter of switching back? Ah, I don't know. Had Google had a, a carrier contract deal with T-Mobile, I probably would have got the Pixel 3 over the 10R. Like, to be honest, I probably would have got that. She still would have got her 10R, but I would have got the Pixel yeah. 3. Now, whether or not I missed out on anything, I don't know. Using the iPhone, I, I don't say, I wouldn't say I missed out on anything, but because she has an iPhone, so I get to tinker with her from time to time. But I felt it's compelled to, no. So from that perspective, I would have missed out a little bit in terms of finding out what iOS is about. But I would have had the Pixel 3, and I would have been happy because I got the Pixel 3. So, as long as I can still have best of both worlds, yeah, I'm going to have, I, I, I'm going to be fine. No, but if you Apple. had to commit to one. Oof. If I had to commit to one, I probably would do Android. And that's because both from a tablet experience and phone, I still... I'm not restricted to anything. As we know, the, the Pixel has a better camera overall than the iPhone. Yeah. Software experience, Google has a better software experience than, than iOS. So, it really, it just comes down to design language. I got this because this phone looks really nice as well. So, from that, from a design language perspective, I would choose the iPhone. Everything else, Android. And specifically, Google. 
So yeah, I probably would stay or go back to Android. As it is right now, I use my iPhone 10R as my daily driver. I use my Pixel 2 for my production, for, for making my videos and stuff mm. like that. So I don't see myself really losing in my current state. And for that, I'm of course entirely uh, grateful. So switching back to Android, no. Do I still use it? Of course. So it's not a matter of me cutting off Android because that, that wouldn't, I have not felt that you can't with the commit iOS. To Apple all it's not about day. committing. Not, Apple doesn't give you a reason to commit to iOS. You know? Oh, well, they, gave, doesn't they give me. me doesn't reason. give me. But you also haven't had a, a dedicated to a, a, an Android <laughs> yes, phone I, or a Pixel 2. Before, Pixel. before I went to Apple, I had nothing with Android. Okay, and she's talking about like years ago <laughs> when Android was still picking up things. In Android's current state, and she had a Pixel 3, she wouldn't be complaining. So, and I've seen a lot of wives be happy with the wide angle uh, front facing camera. No, honestly, the Pixel 3. okay, honestly, the Pixel is good. If I if I ever switched, it would be to Google and Google only. Mm -hmm. But I honestly don't ever see myself leaving Apple. May, I can't say never, but exactly. but as I'm of just, now, it's a definite no. So. Okay, no definite no because <laughs> someone would give you a Pixel Three, you'd be uh, like, okay. I would no, would. I would do what you do. Boom. Use two. I would use really the Pixel. Is just, is this the camera? If if honestly though, if Apple, which you said that couldn't happen, if Apple put their cam, I mean Google put their camera in Apple, I would not. I would not leave. Oh yeah, I can, yeah, I can. It would make it that much harder to switch back to Android because then it's a matter of software experience. But again, for me, I like how Google integrates itself into their phones in terms of all the Google apps, Google Assistant, and their way of just utilizing the phone. I like Google better than than, than Apple and iOS. Now, Apple is simplistic; it's very user friendly. Mm -hmm. That can hurt itself oftentimes, and as we've heard. With iPad, with the iPad experience, it limits itself to what you're able to use it for. Now, of course, there's a few things people have found some workarounds or found some things that work for the tablet experience. But uh, again, that's all I would use it for and media consumption, which is fine because that's all I do with my tablet right now. So, you know, if you wanted it to be like a whole complete like laptop alternative, or, or you know, I want to use this in place of my laptop, the iPad Pro is not does not make a good case for that. In terms of uh, iOS on a phone, it's kind of the same way when you have an Android phone because you still find yourself using an Android phone from time to time, which I do from time to time still use my Android phone to access certain apps on my tablet to access those same apps because I have them both on both on both uh, platforms. So at the end of the day, am I switching to the Android or switching back full time, whatever, to Android? No. Um, for the most part, happy with this phone, and it's kind of giving me insight into my own user uh, user experience or how often I actually use my phone. I haven't really needed to with the uh, iPhone as much, which I guess is, you could say is good because not on my phone often. So, no, I'm not switching back to Android. Thankfully, I have the best of both worlds, so I don't have to choose. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this video. We talked about it. Let us know down in the comments below how you guys feel. Yes. I'm probably gonna mention this in the beginning of another video, but I'm gonna mention it now. I put my PayPal in the description for, the, for donations, of course, that helps support the channel, helps with gaining products to review and show you guys and showcase here. Uh, I do have my Amazon link down there as well, so whenever you guys buy stuff through at my Amazon links, you know, it again goes towards uh, benefiting this channel to continue to provide content. So if you guys didn't know that already, Definitely check out the, the, uh, the description if you guys ever think about buying stuff through Amazon. Your boy up, please. And then, you know, if you guys want to see certain things or whatever, of course, PayPal. I've already had one person uh, reach out via PayPal, and then I've seen some people buy stuff through my Amazon links. Okay. So I definitely appreciate it. And as that stuff starts building up, we're going to see start seeing more stuff come through on this channel. So I'll mention that again in the beginning of another video, so that way more I see it because I don't know who made it this far to the end of this video. <laughs> it was like 30 minutes. Huh? This video is crazy long. <laughs> so, woo, but it's two people talking. Had it just been me, probably would have been like 15 minutes. No, it still minutes. would have been 30 minutes. Yeah, been <laughs> so, your boy Versatile is signing out and until the next video. Wait for it.